I had a chance to test this Olympus OM system Zuiko Auto T 180mm f 2.0 lens. This is a very rare lens and I'm really excited to share my thoughts and some images that I took with this. It's marvelous. Hi there, my name is Peter Forsgaard and I am an Olympus visionary and a professional photographer from Helsinki, Finland. And before we start talking about this lens, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit that bell so you get notified when there is a new video online. My channel is all about you getting to be a better photographer and of course about Olympus gear. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. But let's start. And a disclaimer, this lens is not mine. Olympus Finland loaned it to me. So thanks Olympus Finland for letting me test this rare OM system lens. This lens is from 1983-84. That was the time when OM system cameras like OM3 and OM4 were really popular. And at the time Olympus lacked long telephoto lenses. So they went and make, made 180 mm f 2.8 lens this one then they also had a 100 mm 2.0 lens and also two lenses that are really rare the 250 f 2.0 lens and also a 350 mm but that was 2.8 lens the price of this lens is of course you can't get a new one but used is around 10000 euros slash dollars and that's a huge amount of money for a very old lens but uh, as you will see it is a quite quality lens and to add up that 10,000 10, euros that it would get for me to buy this from eBay because the only ones that I could find at the moment uh, or at the time when I was making this video was from Japan so I would need to have it shipped that would probably cost a bit then the custom will take its share and then of course the state will take 24% value added tax added to that because it's imported outside of EU. So it would be quite an expensive lens and I'm not gonna buy one even though you will see that this is a magnificent lens. And I used this with uh, two cameras, EM1 Mark III and then the original OM system M1 camera. And uh, when I used it with EM1 Mark III of course then you need an adapter and uh, when I loaned this from Olympus, they had also the Novaflex Micro Four Thirds to OM system adapter, which is very, very good. So not sponsored by Novaflex, but they make really durable and very good uh, adapters for almost any system. So, and that's why uh, the Micro Four Thirds system is great because you can attach almost any lens to it. What I would like to do is to test this with a uh, speed booster. There, I know that there has been uh, speed boosters for OM system so that you can attach it to micro four thirds cameras and uh, that is uh, something because the speed boosters will make this even faster and then also it will uh, reduce the crop factor which is two of course about the M1 that I have the problem with that was that the shutter was not very consistent so I did not get very sharp images on well not sharp okay yeah, they were sharp those images but the exposure wasn't really spot on on those so those images came out a bit dark most of them and also those images are, are more of a artistic style rather than showing the the amazing quality of this lens but i will show some some of those artistic images too and yeah it's a really nice weather it's early Saturday morning when I'm filming this and it's, it's so nice out now and, and I've decided to come by the sea because, you know, Helsinki is surrounded by the sea and it's just, it's just marvelous. So much enjoying this weather, even though, you know, the, the sun is coming straight to my face and that's not the best way to light your talent on, on, on a video. So never use harsh light like I do now. As you can see, it's not very flattering. And also I need to, you know, make this funny face because the sun is quite, quite uh, bright. There's no clouds in the sky this early morning. 
But let's continue and enough with the chit chat about the weather. The focal length of this lens is, as I said, 180 millimeters, which means that when I've attached it to uh, a micro four thirds body, the equivalent angle of view uh, when we compare it to full frame is 360 millimeters. But of course, the aperture is still f2, even though the uh, depth of field is, uh, what do you call it, it's uh, f4 lens. So it's a 360 millimeter f4 lens if we talk about depth of field and comparing it to full frame. The lens is quite heavy and it weighs 1.9 kilograms, which is about 67 ounces. And I had the HLD9 battery grip on it because it's more balanced like this. Without the battery grip, it's, it feels a little, little bit unbalanced because it's so heavy. And that goes with all long telephoto lenses when you're using it on, on a OMD body. And as you can see, the front element is also quite big. It's actually 100 millimeter filter thread. So you need a quite a big filter if you want to use filters on this. But of course, when you're using digital, you don't really need any filters. But if you're using film, you might want to have some filters that block ultraviolet light to make the image quality a bit better. But as I said, with digital, you don't need any filters. Of course, this lens is fully manual and the manual focus ring is quite big, as you can see. So it's very easy to focus. And it wasn't actually that hard to focus with this because there is focus peaking available. And a pro tip, always, if you're using manual focus lenses, assign focus peaking to a button. So it's easy to have it on, and if you don't need it, then take it off. And of course, with the M1, it was uh, also quite easy to focus with this because it has a very good micro prism in, in the viewfinder. So it, it is actually not that hard to uh, focus these manually, but it gets or needs to be some practice or needs to be practiced so that you, you can master it. It's of course manu uh, manual focus. I mean, uh, autofocus is a lot better, but uh, you can manage if you, if you practice. And then of course the aperture ring is here where you, where you change the aperture and it works really, really well as you can see. And the aperture goes from f2 all the way up to f22. But let's continue and, and finally look at some images that I took with this combination. And before we talk about the image quality, here are all the specs of this lens. As you probably noticed from the specs, there were two extenders also available. A 1.4 extender and 2.0 extender, like there is now, MC14 and MC20. And when you're attaching this with an adapter to a micro four thirds body, you can also use extenders because there is room for the extender. And that will make this lens 252 millimeters with the MC14 and, and 360 millimeter with MC20. And of course, you double that when you are looking at the angle of view that these lenses can produce. And that's quite a long telephoto lens when you're having extenders with this on a micro four thirds body. And what's great about it is that you can still use them handheld because of the very good stabilizer in Olympus OMD bodies. You can easily have quite long shutter speeds with this combination. And, but remember, if you're using this with an old uh, film body which did not have any stabilizing, then the story is totally different. You need to have a lot shorter shutter speeds. And the closest focusing distance is 1.6 meters, so you can get really close with it. And let's talk about the image quality. There's one word, stunning. The image quality is nothing wrong with the image quality. Even with full open, it's really, really sharp, as you can see from this image. It's nothing wrong with the image quality. And the only thing is that if you can 
use the manual focus, you will get really sharp results. And only thing about the image is that it's a bit bluish. So there is a, uh, a small tint to blue. And that's no wonder because uh, when using film, we used to have ultraviolet blocking from the from the lens for, or for entering the lens. So it could be it, but it's not a, actually a big problem because you can correct it in post very, very easily. So should one get this lens? I would say that maybe not. But of course, it depends if you are a collector and want to have something uh, very rare and very special, then yeah, why not? But as I said in the beginning, I don't think I will, I will get this lens because there are lots and lots of good options for long telephoto lenses for micro four-thirds body, like, like the 300 millimeter f4 lens, which is a bit longer. And then you have the 40 to 150 millimeter with extender and then some more photography. I tried to catch some birds or photograph some birds with this because this is most likely the thing that most of you would use this is bird photography. I tried it with M1, of course, too, but uh, that was uh, quite hard. It's actually hard with this one too because of the manual focus. It's no problem, you know, focusing the birds that are still sitting on a, on a branch or, or on, a, on the ground. That's not a problem, of course, but trying to catch a flying bird, you need to be really, really talented photographer to do that. I know it can be done, but uh, I'm not so used to photographing, uh, you know, fast moving objects. So I couldn't do it, but here are some more images. And as you saw, nothing wrong with the image quality. They really knew how to make great glass already in 1980s. And, you know, they still do make great glasses like the Pro Series of Olympus lenses or M Zuiko lenses. And they used to be Zuiko, now they are M Zuiko lenses. So if you're getting this, you will get a stunning lens. As I said, I also tried it with the M1, but it uh, didn't come out too well because as I said in the beginning the shutter is not working consistently so the shutter speeds were you know all over the place. I did make some images with this combo too but those images didn't come out too well. As I said these shutter speeds were all over the place but here are some of the more artistic versions of the scenery here in Helsinki. The film that I used was Ilford XP2. It can be processed in C41, which is the color negative process. And that's exactly why I used Ilford XP2, because I don't have a darkroom. If you're serious about film photography, then you should invest in darkroom gear. Uh, I don't have a place for darkroom right now, so I can't really develop the, the films myself. Maybe someday I can. And I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, here are some more for you to watch. This is the Pen F video, a vintage Olympus gear like this one that I made, I think it was last week. I hope you enjoyed that video too. Go check it out. But hey, thanks for watching and bye for now.